G'day and welcome back to Disc Golf Down Under. It's Matt here and today we're starting a new series on getting started with disc golf. And of course, we can't play disc golf without discs. So that's what we're looking at in this episode. So let's get into it and let's have a look at plastic. To play disc golf, we're going to need some discs. And just not any discs, we're gonna need disc golf discs. To start off, you can play disc golf um, casually with throwing discs. So something like a, an Ultra Star or a freestyle disc uh, is something that you can give a try. You could liken it to playing ball golf or standard golf with a hockey stick and a tennis ball. You can do it, but you're definitely not gonna have as much fun if you're playing with the right equipment. But really, to get the most out of the sport, you want to look at disc golf discs. So they're a different shape. They're a bit smaller than your standard freestyle discs. Uh, the, they have a bit more of a streamlined shape and they're designed more for distance and accuracy. So yeah, if you wanna get out on the course and give it a throw with a, an Ultra Star, that's fine. But really, to get the most out of the sport, you'll want to look at disc golf discs. So to start playing disc golf, you can get away with just a single disc uh, and it's highly recommended that you start with a putter. So a putter is designed for straight throwing, relatively short distance and for throwing into the basket. Uh, so my son has been playing for about a year now. I bought him a starter pack and uh, he still prefers to play with his putter for 90% of his throws. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's a good way to to get started and gives you nice, accurate um, control and um, you learn how to throw the disc well. But there's a lot more to it than just the putter. There's also other discs, so that we have what's called mid-rangers, fairway drivers and distance drivers. So one option when you're starting out is to look for a starter pack. And these are a relatively inexpensive way to get started. Um, something like the Innova starter pack you'll get a putter, you'll get a mid-range, and you'll get a fairway driver. Um, that will get you started. Also, something similar like Latitude 64, they also have a starter pack. This is the Retro line, and it is this one's a lightweight version designed more for kids. So, and we'll get into weights as well uh, in a minute. So, your starter packs uh, usually come in the cheaper plastics, and we'll talk a bit more about plastics as well. Uh, but you can pick up a starter pack for around $40 to $50 uh, to get you started with three discs. If you're to buy the discs individually, uh, you're probably looking at closer to $60. The starter packs are usually put together by the manufacturers using their beginner-friendly discs. Uh, so they're a, they're a very good uh, way to get started in the sport. It's also a good idea to write your name on the back of the disc and your phone number so that if you happen to lose your disc, and it will happen, uh, if you've got your name and phone number on there, if someone finds it, they'll contact you and uh, hopefully it'll find its way back to you. Um, if you don't write your name and number on there, then there's very little chance that you're gonna see that disc again if you lose it. And it is actually a requirement of tournament play if, when you do get to that level, um, that you must have a unique identifier on your discs so that it can be identified if it's lost. So it's a good idea to put your name and phone number on the, on the disc for that too. Okay, so starter packs are a good way to start. Well, where can I buy some discs? Uh, a good start is to go to your local disc golf club. Uh, most of them sell discs these days. So you can go down to the club. Uh, if you ask nicely, they might even let you try them out. And you can check out how the discs feel for you. If your disc golf club doesn't have what you're looking for, there are other options as well. You can look online and um, you can check out my previous video in the link up here, uh, which helps you out on finding other places to buy disc golf discs. But starting out at disc golf, it can be quite daunting for the beginner to understand all of the different types of discs and the options available. So that's what I'm gonna try and break down in this video is we're gonna go through the various options that you might come across. So we're going to talk manufacturers, we're going to talk plastics, we're going to talk weights, and the all mysterious flight ratings. So let's jump in. So disc manufacturers, there's around about a dozen mainstream disc manufacturers worldwide. 
So one of the probably largest ones is Innova or Innova, however you wish to say it, potato, potato. And they do a very good job at their marketing and you'll probably find that most players will start out with an Innova starter pack. So you've got your Leopard, your Shark and your AVR putter, which are some very good options there. Related to Innova, we've got Discmania. Discmania is a European company, but they are closely related. They do their manufacturing in the US uh, through Innova. So the plastics are very similar. And also related to Innova, we've also got Heiser Bomb and Millennium Discs who also manufacture through Innova. Discraft is probably the second largest disc golf manufacturer at the moment, but growing rapidly. They have uh, both Paul Macbeth and Paige Pierce, the reigning world champions, um, sponsored at Discraft. And uh, yeah, they've also got some great discs. Next along, we have the Trilogy group of companies or Team Trilogy, and that includes Dynamic Discs, uh, Westside, and Latitude 64. We also have Gateway. We also have Prodigy Disc and MVP, who have the additional brands of Axiom and Streamline. Then in Scandinavia, we have uh, Custoplast and Viking Discs. And a bit closer to home, we have Fourth Circle Discs based in Australia and RPM Discs based in New Zealand. So that gives you a wide range of manufacturers and there are a few more out there as well. There's a couple from China and um, a, a, a few smaller manufacturers out there. But these are the main ones that you'll find available in Australia. So the next choice that you'll have when you're selecting discs is the plastic type. And there's many, many different types of plastics. Each manufacturer has a brand name or a trademark name for their plastic types. Um, but really we can break it down to four main types that you'll see out there. Um, the first one is the baseline level plastics. Um, these are the cheaper plastics. So you'll generally see these in your starter kits. They're also very popular in putters because they have a nice feel. So Innova has their DX plastic and then companies like Latitude 64 have their retro line. And then we also have things like Prime Plastic, Origio, Electron, um, 200 Series, etc. So these plastics, as we said, are cheaper and they're also less durable. They don't, um, don't handle the, the knocks and the scratches, so getting thrown up trees, um, hitting concrete and bitumen and things like that. They get scratched up and dinged up very easily. So they do what's called um, wearing in. So the flight of the disc will change over time. And so the cheaper baseline plastics will beat in or season in more quickly. So you'll find even the pros tend to stick with the baseline plastics um, or the, the less durable plastics for their putters. But as we move up to uh, mid ranges and beyond, you'll find that most experienced players will move to a more durable plastic. There's three types of um, what we call premium plastics. Uh, probably the first main one is the opaque um, type of plastic. And you'll find that this is um, for, for Innova, they call it their uh, star plastic. So it's, a, it's an opaque plastic. It's got a little bit of flexibility to it, similar to the DX. Uh, MVP have their neutron plastic. And then you'll also find uh, things like Goldline, ESP, Tournament Series, Fusion, and 750 Series. So the next type of plastic you'll find out there is uh, what we'll find is a more, what we call pearlescent or a gummy plastic. So the aim of this plastic is to, to have the durability, but it's also to have a little bit more grip. Um, so in the Innova line, you'll see the G-Star plastic. Uh, and in MVP, they call it Plasma, Fluid, ESPZ, Elasto, Frost, 450 Series, etc. in the different manufacturers. So the G-Star plastic, it has a bit of a, as we see, a pearlescent sheen. Uh, it tends to be a little bit more flexible than the, uh, the Star plastic. And similar in the MVP, so you might see a little bit of a pearlescent luster. Uh, in the plastics, they tend to look a little bit nicer. The, the light reflects off them very nicely. And as we said, these are very good in, uh, for grip. So they're very popular in winter. In summer, especially in Australia, uh, the sun gets on them, they become very flexible and floppy. So they may not be very suitable for hot weather. 
So at the upper end of the premium plastics for durability, we have um, the translucent plastics. Innova calls it uh, champion plastic. So it's a, it's a see-through plastic. And uh, MVP calls it Proton. But you'll also hear names like Opto, Lucid, 400 series, Elite Z, VIP, and others. You might also hear this called a, a candy plastic. There's also other plastics out there as well, um, which for specialized tasks. So there's things like glow in the dark discs for playing at night and other plastics for specific applications. So it comes down to personal preference in what plastic you go with. Um, but most players will go with the more durable plastic and they go with the premium opaque types. So the star plastic, the neutron, the gold line, uh, etc. The next thing we need to consider is weight of the disc. Uh, so the discs themselves generally weigh between 130 to 180 grams and they are controlled by the rules. The rules specify what maximum weight is allowed in a certain size disc. Um, but most discs that are thrown by adult throwers are around the 170 to 175 gram mark. But there are, as we mentioned, other options available. There are lightweight options and you'll find in some of the starter packs is what's called the lightweight series. So 150 series discs around 150 grams, which are, are lighter and good for, for kids and, um, and people with less strength. And you can also pick up discs as light as 130 grams from the manufacturers which are designed for people that don't have as much arm speed. So the weight differences might not sound like much, but it's for, especially for young people um, and people with uh, not very strong arm muscles, you could probably compare it between throwing a tennis ball and a cricket ball. So the heavier ball, you're not probably gonna be able to throw as far if you don't have very strong arm. Whereas once you do have the strength, uh, you will definitely throw a heavier object further than the lighter one. And the final option that you will have to work out is the disc flight rating. So on most discs, you will find uh, written a flight rating. These are four numbers. And these four numbers describe how the disc will fly. So the four numbers in order are speed, glide, turn or high speed stability, and fade or low speed stability. Now, there is no real standard with flight ratings. They do vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. They are trying to sort of get closer and closer, but be careful looking on, on manufacturers' websites uh, as the numbers can be different. So let's have a look first at speed ratings. So the speed rating is a measure of how aerodynamic the disc is or a measure of the rim width. So they range from numbers from one up to 14 in general. Um, so one is a slow speed disc and 14 is a high speed disc. So a putter like this Avia has a speed of three and then this high speed driver, which is a speed 13, you can see has a much, um, much more aerodynamic shape. So putters are in the range of one to three speed. We then have mid ranges, which go from four to five speed. We then have fairway drivers, which go from six to nine speed. And then everything from speed 10 upwards is what we call a distance driver. So the higher the speed of the disc, it's generally the, the thicker the rim. So the higher the speed, the more the rim is. So that can be make it more difficult to throw, especially for small hands. It also requires a higher arm speed and arm strength to throw that disc and get it to perform like the flight ratings um, describe. So the number one mistake the beginners make is that they think I need to go for a high speed disc. I need to get a speed 14 disc to get the maximum distance. But that's probably one of the biggest mistakes out there. Uh, for beginners, you wanna start off with your putters, your mid ranges, and your low end fairway drivers. So start with say a speed six or a speed seven, then maybe work up to an eight or a nine, and then work upwards once you feel comfortable that you have the arm speed. You'll find a lot of experienced players out there, maybe have been playing for many years, the maximum speed they might have in their bag is a speed 10 because they just don't have the power and the arm speed to throw the speed 13, the speed 14 discs. The next number in the flight rating is the glide. So the glide generally ranges from one to six and 
It's a pretty easy one. Usually the higher the number, the more the disc will glide. So the more, it, more lift it has, the more it will fly and carry. So a disc with a six glide rating will travel further and glide further than something that has a glide rating of say two or three. So for beginners, you should look for glide ratings four and above. The lower glide number discs uh, usually have a utility purpose. So they, they might be used for a, um, a short range disc that you want to stop quickly and don't want to overshoot the target. So the third number in the flight rating is the turn or the high speed stability. And this number ranges from zero to negative five. The more negative the number, the more that the disc wants to turn to the right when you release the disc, when it comes out of your hand. So if it has like a minus three or a minus four turn rating, it will want to flip over and travel to the right. Uh, a zero turn rating will do the opposite. It won't want to flip over and turn to the right at all. It will want to go straight out of your hand. If anyone's thrown an Ultra Star, it has a turn rating probably of around minus two. So you'll notice that they, when you throw them hard, they'll flip up and turn over to the right and travel to the right. So for beginners, it's a good hint to look for discs with a turn rating of around minus one, minus two, maybe even up to minus three. And what this does is it allows the disc uh, to, to give it a bit more travel. So with, with your lower arm speed, it will fly straighter. And the final number in our flight ratings is the fade or the low speed stability. And the fade number ranges from zero up to around about five. So zero means that it has very little fade at the end of its flight, whereas five means that it has a lot of fade. And just this is the opposite of the turn rating. So fade means it wants to go to the left and this will generally happen at the end of its flight. So a large fade number, you'll see the disc go sharply left at the end. So just like we had with our turn rating, beginners want to steer clear of discs with high fade number. So you want to stick with something like a zero, a one or no more than say a two for your fade. So enough theory crafting, let's go outside now and throw some discs to demonstrate the different flight ratings. So I'm gonna be throwing four different discs at different ends of the spectrum. So I'm gonna be throwing a putter, uh, which is a gateway wizard, which has a speed of two, a glide of three, zero turn and a fade of two. And they're gonna be throwing an MVP signal, which is a very understable fairway driver. It has a speed of six, a glide of five, a turn of minus three and a fade of one. And then next we're gonna be throwing a very stable fairway driver, which is a resistor, has a speed also of six, glide of four, a turn of zero and a fade of 3.5. And finally, we're gonna be throwing a high speed distance driver, an Axiom Mayhem, which is neutrally stable or stable, has a speed of 13, a glide of five, a turn of minus 1.5 and a fade of two. So I'm gonna be throwing these discs at two different speeds. Uh, first of all, I'm gonna be throwing at approximately 50% of my power, which is probably typical of what a beginner might be throwing when they first start out. And then secondly, I'll throw at about 80% power, which is closer to the speed that the disc is designed to be thrown at. So first up is the Wizard throwing at 50% power and you can see that it starts off fairly straight and it has a bit of fade at the end. 58 meters for the beginner. Similar flight pattern for when thrown at 80% power, goes about 10 meters extra. The Understable Fairway Driver thrown at about 50% power has a nice turn out to the right and then fades back to the left at the end. So all up it's a fairly straight throw at about 68 meters. And then if I give it a much harder pull at about 80% power. You can see it pulls out to the right and stays out that way and flies about 75 meters. So the understable driver is not suited to be thrown at high speed for an experienced player, but works very well for a beginner. So now the overstable fairway driver, the resistor, thrown at 50% power. You can see it pulls out to the left very quickly. And then if we put a bit more power into it, 
Again, a very similar flight path, flies a little bit further, 69 meters. And then for our final throw, we're gonna be throwing the high speed distance driver. Uh, it's to start with at 50% power, you can see that it starts off fairly straight. There's no sign of turn, and then it fades hard at the end. It goes about 79 meters. When given a 80% power pull, uh, you can see there is a bit of turn there. It comes back to the right and then fades back to the left at the end. It ends up at about 93 meters. So you can see there the differences in power levels. So as a beginner, you wanna be looking at understable discs to begin with and then working up to more stable discs as your arm speed increases. So I just wanna finish up now with a list of recommendations for your own starter pack. If you don't wanna go out and buy a specific manufacturer's starter pack, you can build your own. And what I put together here is a list of uh, four discs. So starting at a putter, speed one to three, and then a mid-range, speed four to five, a low speed fairway driver, speed six to seven, and then a high speed fairway driver at speed eight to nine. So if you're looking at the Innova brand, some good discs are the Avia putter. Uh, the Mako 3 is a very good mid-range. The Leopard is good as a low speed fairway driver. And once you're comfortable with the Leopard, I would highly recommend the Valkyrie as a high speed fairway driver. I, I threw the Valkyrie when um, I started out and it's a, a great disc for a beginner. Discraft for their putter, the magnet is highly recommended. And then probably the most popular mid-range out there, the Buzz. Um, the low speed fairway driver would be the Zombie and for, for a little bit more experience, go for the Heat. Thanks to JB for giving me some tips on the Trilogy discs. Uh, dynamic discs go for the Judge putter, uh, Truth for the mid-range, Maverick for the low speed fairway driver and an Escape for something when you have a bit more experience. And for the Latitude 64, the Pure for the putter, Fuse for the mid-range, River for the fairway driver, and Diamond when you've got a little bit more experience. Uh, MVP, Axiom Streamline, uh, the Pilot is a very good putter for beginners. And then moving on to the Theory is uh, very similar to the Fuse, very good mid-range there. Uh, then for the fairway driver, Relay works very well. And then with a bit more experience, the Inertia. And then finally, some wild cards there. Uh, the Gateway Wizard is one of the better putters out there. Uh, the M4 from Prodigy is a great mid-range. And then in the fairway drivers, the Discmania FD and the Essence are also some great discs. So if you want to build your own, go out there and grab some of these discs. So once you've got your discs, go out there and have some fun on the course. Uh, throw them around, get used to them, and, uh, and in a future video, I'll be having a look at how to throw. As a beginner, you probably don't need a bag to begin with. If you've got two or three discs, you can carry them around. Uh, worst case, grab yourself a, a reusable shopping bag and use that as a bag. I'd suggest looking at a bag once you've got, say, five or more discs, and you can either go for one of the smaller bags, which carry up to five to 10 discs, mid-sized bag, 10 to 15, or go for one of the larger bags, 15 to 20, once you've got that number of discs. So that brings us to the end of our video. I hope you found it useful. Um, a reminder, this, this is your final chance to enter the giveaway for the Ozdisks $20 voucher. To enter the draw, just leave a comment down below or subscribe to the Disc Golf Down Under channel. Also, if you liked the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down and let me know what you didn't like about it. And also let me know in the comments down below what you think your top three starter discs would be for disc golf. So that's it for this one and we'll catch you in the next one.